Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to do a how to play video on Don't Look Back by Blackside Studios. So let's get going. I've already done a number of videos on Black Sight Studios' new game, Don't Look Back, but it occurs to me that I haven't done a how-to-play video. Now, there's a few out there. The um, Black Sight Studios themselves have been very good with their YouTube channel and their Twitch channel doing uh, regularly scheduled, particularly on the Twitch channel, regularly scheduled uh, games on Tuesday nights where you can actually watch them play. And the writer of the game, Matt, is about to do the same thing on his own uh, Twitch channel, uh, Dark Harbor Designs. So it's very easy to find some videos on how to play by people who are more experienced in the game than myself. But um, I have covered a bit of the game. Uh, I do think it might be useful to show uh, how to play uh, from my point of view. Uh, I probably will make some mistakes. The, um, the one issue with this game is the rule book is not particularly easy to follow and it's very easy to, to miss things or to, to make mistakes. There's at least one rule that's missing, uh, the, uh, the fact that you cannot uh, leave an engagement. Your characters are base to base. They cannot just leave that. They have to do a stumble back or have some other way to get out of that fight. And it's not mentioned in the rule book anywhere. I probably shouldn't have started with that. Uh, the rules, it's a, it's a very good system and it's a lot of fun. It's just hard to find what you're looking for. Uh, so I thought I would do a how-to play video and show uh, some of the gameplay, hopefully explain some of it, hopefully not make too many errors myself. So um, don't look back. It's a pretty simple game. It uses mostly a D10 and a D20. It is meant to be played cooperatively or solo, so you're working with each other, which makes it a great game for families, particularly in the, the present coronavirus situation we're in. It's a great thing to be able to do with your family in lockdowns. Based on uh, 80s and 90s slasher films, it's a really easy genre for people to understand and to get into. So it's been great for that. The characters are pretty simple. They consist of just a handful of, of attributes. Uh, the stats consist of, uh, well, one, whether they're teens or adults. Uh, most of the characters are teens, but there's a, as of the making of this video, there are two adult characters available. Uh, that's Ranger Sandy and Dr. Grange. Move, how many inches they can move. Combat, the skill they need to roll when engaged in combat. Awareness, which is used for a few different things in the game, including the range for any ranged weapons. Uh, fright, that's how many fright points they can take before the fright starts scaring them and putting them in an awkward situation, actually affecting them. A uh, luck, you, every character has a few luck skills they can use to make re-rolls or to heal either their mental or physical injuries. Uh, and then they'll have skills in an item, and the, the items can vary from a shotgun to a flashlight. Um, they can vary a lot, and the skills will be based a lot on who the characters are. If you watch the videos, you'll see the character cards, and that caused a bit of confusion to those of us who participated in the pre-sale, including myself. I thought my my cards were missing when they weren't in the, the game when I got it, but actually they weren't intended. So if you purchase the game, it does not come with the character cards, but all the stats you need are in the rule book and Black Sight Studios has made cards available for free on their game resources page that you can print out. They're going to be producing a more deluxe set, which will also have some fluff describing the background of some of the characters on the reverse. Those aren't available yet, but they, they are coming in the future. They are available for the new expansion pack for Final Girls. So uh, all that's available. The, the company's been very supportive of this game. I mentioned their Facebook page. Well, I didn't mention the Facebook page. I mentioned the YouTube channel, and I mentioned their Twitch channel. They also have a Facebook page directly to the, the game. They're not only very quick to answer any questions you may have about gameplay or, uh, well, anything, really. Somebody today asked uh, what the pizza company in uh, Northwoods was. So um, they'll answer just about anything. They've On the game resources page, they immediately put up a errata to try to solve some of the issues with the rule book. They have put up a cheat sheet to remind you of the various roles. Um, by my request, they created a list of the quick and long actions, which were kind of hard for a new player to remember or to, to remind other people when you were sharing the game, which I've been doing with a lot of people in my neck of the woods here in Williamsburg. 
the other night even, uh, somebody suggested there should be a supporting character, Pizza Man, and um, by the end of that night, they had put one, made one available. They also said don't expect that often. So I, I'm not making any promises for Black Side Studios. Uh, but they have been very, very responsive and very, very supportive of this game. And, um, and that's fun to see. The, the stream, I recommend the stream to anybody interested in this game. Not only do you get to see the game being played, but it's more like you're hanging out with a bunch of friends uh, than you're... Um, watching a, a how to play video. Uh, so very supportive on that rate too. They also talk about where some of the fluff of the game, they talk about future concepts and ideas for the game, and they listen to their fans. And sometimes that will affect and change things in the storyline and cause things to be created like the pizza man that I mentioned. The You'll notice in the game that we have a supporting character, but I use the basic token, which is what the rules call for. Uh, they in their videos usually use one of their extra figures and they plan in the future of making specific supporting character figures. So. Um, Great, great company, great game. Uh, but that's enough talking about that. I said this was a video on how to play the game. So let's go to the gaming table. The first thing you do in the setup phase is you pick which characters you're gonna use for the game. The, uh, the characters' cards all have numbers on them. That two up here, right there. So you can simply roll a d6. Uh, with the basic game, there are six characters. You can roll a d6 four times, uh, repeating any duplicates. Uh, I've rolled, and today we're going to have Alice Grace, Max the Abs, Seth Newton, and Denise DeGraw. Uh, Alice is the uh, cheerleader. She moves farther than anybody. She can help to encourage people on the board and her megaphone allows her to increase her range for doing so. Uh, Max the Ab, he has baby blues, which allows him to, uh, any female character, uh, to, to move towards him. And he has a baseball bat, which is the only weapon in this particular plot. Uh, Seth Newton is the uh, nerd, and he is armed with a flashlight, which can usually be used to um, to avoid getting fright points and for uh, keeping the killer from harming you. Uh, that doesn't work in today's plot. I will explain that in a moment. Uh, and he has well actually, which increases his awareness, which is already better than most of the characters in the game. He pays for that with a really bad move. His move is only three, where the average is four. And Denise, uh, she is a debutante. If she's base to base with the killer, she can switch places with any male character within her awareness, so they, they have to come and protect her. Uh, and she has daddy's phone, which can be used to draw a supporting character. So if we pick the, uh, the characters we're using first, then you determine what plot you're playing. Plot is the term that this game uses for scenarios. There are five that come with the basic game. Uh, those are all numbered, so you can roll them randomly. There's also additional plots that come with um, the expansions. All, uh, most of the expansions have had uh, at least one specific uh, plot. Here's a plot card that comes with um, Boxcar Willie, for instance. Those are for... The ones that come with the basic game are all designed to take place in woodlands. Most of what you need for the game will come in the box with the exception of trees. You're gonna need a bunch of trees, possibly uh, rock formations, things to make a woodland area. Those don't come in the box, and a playing surface of some sort does not. I'm, I'm using a, uh, a vinyl mat for this game, uh, but neoprene mats, uh, they make an excellent one at Black Sight Studios, specifically for the game. A canvas map like this, a fabric mat. Frankly, you could get by with with a green piece of felt if you wanted to. So a number of different things can be used for the woodland map, uh, but those things do not come in the basic game. The plot I have rolled for is Trapped, which will be interesting, I've never actually played Trapped. Trapped, um, you wake up to the sounds of familiar screams deep in the woods as you head out to find your friend. You quickly notice the undergrowth is littered with rustling animal traps. From the remains locked in the rusty jaws, it looks as if someone has been hunting more than just animals. The table setup, this table's already set up for this uh, plot. It's set up to represent the deep heart of the woods, 
with lots of varied terrain to represent woods and other undergrowth. Randomly choose a character to be stuck in the bear trap I have, and that is Denise. Uh, she is over here in the center of quadrant D, or section D as they call it, board section D. The game, the tables are always um, divided into four sections. It's section A, B, C, and D. Right now there's a fright token, these gray tokens in the center of each one of those. I'll get to that in a moment too. So she's already there in the center of D. There is a fright token, as I just mentioned, at the center of each board. Those are used to help the increasing tension of the game and where the killer will appear. Point of interest. The um, a point of interest, this, game, this particular plot has no points of interest, but um, the fright token are, is basically is a gray token with a skull on it. The reverse of that, a yellow token with an exclamation mark, is a point of interest token. There aren't, aren't any in this game. Those usually would represent uh, perhaps people you're looking for or items you're looking for or just interesting items you might be able to find. This particular plot has none. This particular plot is 12 turns long. Then there's a series of special rules. Those are to make each plot different from one another. Uh, the special rules for this game are traps. If a character makes more than one move action during their activation, you roll a d20. Out of 15 or higher, the character steps in an old trap and they immediately will trip and take two damage. Bear trap. The character stuck in the bear trap, Denise, has to remain within four inches of the center of the table section, D. And if another character enters and is within an inch of her, uh, upon making an investigation roll at negative five, they can free the trapped character from that bear trap. Injured leg. Once the trapped character, Denise, is freed from the bear trap, she will suffer a negative two inch movement to her movement for every move action, unless stick together is used. Her move action is four, so that's gonna reduce her, um, her move by half, unless stick together is used. If another character is within two inches of the freed character, Denise, when the freed character activates, the freed character only suffers negative one to her movement instead of negative two. Lights, there are no lights beginning on the table. Uh, Seth does have his flashlight, which does create light. Objective, the players need to free the character that was trapped and the character must make it off the table edges in table section A before the end of 12. So the characters have to free Denise and at least Denise has to get off one of the uh, 18 inch corner edges there in A has 12 turns to do that. Now in this game, you have the ability to either create a random killer to mix it up, or you can use a character that was created specifically for the plot you're running, what the game calls a themed killer. That's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna use the themed killer. In this particular uh, plot, the themed killer is the woodsman. Now killers are all uh, described by um, three attributes. So this particular one, the first one is always his MO, and that's how he hunts. How this one is stalking. When he appears from offboard, you place the killer six inches out of the front arc of the character furthest from the center of board section A, right near that fright marker. Uh, the killer will move towards that character in the case of a tie the players may choose. You'll find that that's almost always what happens, and the general guideline to follow is the rule of cinema. When unsure of how two rules interact or how to resolve a situation that results in a tie that is not discussed in the rules, talk with the other players and create an outcome that improves the story experience of your plot. Don't look back is about capturing the best scenes possible. It's not about winning, it's about creating the best scenes. So that's stalking, his visage is mundane. Uh, what that means is a couple of things. Uh, it means he takes 10 points uh, damage. It means he's somebody normal. They may even know him, like the ice cream truck driver. Uh, if he is driven off, the mundane killer is driven off, replace it with a fright token. So a fright token would appear where you drove him off from. Uh, special actions, when a mundane killer kills a support character, it removes three injuries. So if a support character is called by Denise and he, the killer kills him, he'll heal from that. 
Uh, mundane killers are affected by difficult terrain. That is mentioned because usually killers avoid or ignore terrain. Uh, his attacks, killers have uh, two attacks, a first and a second. His first is revolver. Mundane killers will only target a character with a weapon with this attack. The only character with a weapon, at least at the beginning of the game, is Max with his bat in this particular plot, tonight's plot. The attack can be used while the killer is in base to base with a character. Uh, his second is strangle. Mundane killers will target a character in base to base with the most terror points. Combat is 15. Damage does two injuries. The um, combat is the, his skill roll that he has to make. Uh, he has to roll that or higher and he'll do two injuries upon hitting. Uh, he also, mundane killers can attack in light. That's one of the ways that makes them different, because they're just normal people. The game is played in a series of phases. Uh, the very first portion of the game is the fright phase. And the first thing that's done is to check your character's terror. Nobody has any terror points right now, so there's really no point in that. But normally you would check now to see if anybody is out of the game for taking terror. If you have twice as much terror as your fright score, then you are out of the game. None of that really applies for the first turn of the game. So we go straight to, to the second portion of Fright Phase, which is rolling for Fright Tokens. The Fright Tokens, there's four of them on the table right now. And those represent the building tension in the game. And normally it's where the killer is going to come from, one of those. Um, they're often nothing. They're, they may just be sounds in the bushes. Um, but they, they start increasing. And um, the first portion of this section of the game is to roll for those tokens. This is, a, again, an increasing tension roll. On turn one, I need to roll 10 on a d10 for them to do anything. That is a d10. I made it. That's bad. <laughs> 10. Very first roll of the game. We've already activated fright tokens on the, the one usually safe turn. Wonderful. Uh, so now what happens is we roll on a, uh, the fright token chart starting with the token that is furthest away from the characters. That's going to be one of these two because of where the characters are placed. I'm going to go ahead and start with the one here. Uh, so we roll a d10 again and we check on the fright token chart and we get a 9. Oh, this is really bad. It's here. Immediately conjure the killer, the scenario specific killer, we are, and replace the fright token with the killer's model. Once placed, move the killer using its target rolls under its MO. So this is not usual, and it is never good to have the killer show up that quick in the game. His MO, stalking, are place the killer six inches out of the front arc of the character furthest from the center of board section A. That's going to be Denise, and out of her line of sight. Uh, so six inches, we're going to put him behind her in this tree. Let's go ahead and finish activating the other tokens and then we'll go on to the killer phase. So the next farthest one is the one over there. Uh, that's 10. That would normally, that's again immediately conjure the killer, but when you've already conjured him, uh, then um, you, you don't, you can't re-conjure him. The roll is greater than the number of injuries on the killer. It has not taken any damage yet. The killer becomes enraged. An enraged killer's next attack results in a critical of one of three instead of just a one. So he gets an enraged token. And uh, I'm going to follow what the Black Sight Studio guys do, which is basically using a supporting character token upside down to represent enraged. Because that'll stay on him until he actually makes an attack. He can never have more than one of those on him, though. That's now we have to roll for the last two. That one's probably the farthest. We move for that. We roll the six. Uh, that's what was that. That token moved six inches towards the closest character. They're all in the same place right over here. And the last one, four, same thing. It's going to move six inches. It doesn't even have to move six. It's going to move right to her. Uh, the killer is going to move D10 plus uh, it would have uh, pluses if she had fright, but she does not yet. It's going to move D10 towards her. And I rolled a D10, of course. The creatures fly. 
So it comes up to Denise. And it's going to do its attack. So it's going to do the strangle because he's not doesn't have a weapon. So he has to roll 15 or higher. Uh, he fails. So she is not down. Uh, but this is not a good way to begin the game. Now we go <laughs> to the player phase. On the character phase, the characters can act in any order you want, and it doesn't have to remain consistent throughout the game. You can change it back and forth. A uh, character regular normally will get a choice of either two quick actions or a quick and a long action. If you're doing a quick and a long, it always has to be done in that order. And the long actions are things like melee, uh, shooting, the uh, fending off or driving off the creature, stuff like that. And they take a little bit longer time to do. The quick actions are your basic movements. There's also the chance for a desperate action, uh, which you can do following two moves, which will give you a, a chance, a lower chance of hitting on a third attack action after two moves. She's probably screaming like crazy now. So we're gonna move Max and he's gonna move his full eight in a hurry. His movement is four. So that was two quick action moves. Uh, anytime you move two quick actions um, in this particular plot, you have to roll, they were over, I was just measuring, if they were within four inches of that, they would have started with a uh, fright point, but they're just out of that. So if he rolls 15 or higher, he's gonna get in a trap. He is not in a trap, uh, so that's, that's a good start. Uh, Alice can move 10, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, same thing though, she runs the possibility of trapping, she does not. Uh, and Seth can only move six because he's got weak ankles. Um, his movement is only three. Oh, and wouldn't you know it, he finds the trap with his weak ankle. So he trips, goes down, that's going to hurt him next turn. Uh, but more importantly, it also puts two hits on him. Uh, anytime you get to ten wounds, you are out in the game. Anybody is killed at 10 wounds. Um, there's things you can do. Some of the actions you can do can either cause yourself to take, uh, lose some of the points, luck, luck for instance, or uh, taking a breath. Um, you can also help other people, like take, take a look at that. Uh, somebody can, else, can help take hit points off of you. Uh, Alice, Alice, um, do we want to fight back or do we want to stumble away? takes 10 points. She is unarmed. She's only going to do one point if she does anything to him. And she can only move four inches. And he's just going to keep chasing her around. And if she stumbles away, she could fall. Yeah, I think she's going to have to stumble away. Stumble away is exactly for this point. This is one of the missing rules in the game. It doesn't mention it. But you cannot just leave if you are in base-to-base -base contact with somebody. You have to, um, a stumble away is risky. Stumble away will allow you, she's gonna do that. She's gonna take a quick action of stumble away. Uh, that allows her to move two inches directly away from the killer. Oops, thought I was being also so sneaky there. But, oh, she also activated right on that point, so she gets a fright token for that. She now has to roll for her awareness. If she fails this awareness, she will trip uh, and also take an injury uh, and also be far more likely to get hit by this thing. Yeah, I could have called for, if she's alive next turn, we'll try to remember to call for somebody instead. All right, so that is the end of that first turn. We go into second turn. So we go into the fright phase. Nobody is at uh, double their fright points yet. Uh, so we build tension. This is turn two. This time they, uh, the tokens activate on a six or higher. One. They do not activate this turn, so a new one appears in the center 
and the rest stay where they're at. However, we do have a killer on the table, so we go to the killer's rules. If the killer was out of line of sight, he could be replaced somewhere else, uh, or if he'd been driven off, but he's, he's still here on the table and he's in line of sight of Denise. So that won't happen. So we go straight to move the killer. Uh, this works the same way it did last time. So we roll a d10. We add her, her fright point. Uh, so, ooh, only four inches. He doesn't need to go far. He's probably, oh, this should be gone. He's playing with her. Doesn't need to go far. Comes right up to the front of her. And he's going to do his attack for 15. Mm, I think I did that wrong last time. I think I, I hit her last time, actually. This is definitely a hit. It's not over. I don't know why I was thinking it was over. It's because some things are over and some things are not. But the attacks are under. Um, that is a hit. And he does, uh, this is a strangle, so it does two injuries. Things are rough for, for Denise right now. Um, I think Denise needs to activate. Denise needs to try to do her uh, stumble away as her quick action. Uh, has to roll eight or under. She's okay. Uh, now she's going to do her special item. She's going to use her daddy's cell phone. She can only do this twice, but it is a quick action. So this would be count as two quick actions. The, uh, she can place a supporting character token in her board section on a d20 roll of six or higher. Seven. Make it. So we're going to replace, we'll place the support character right here. Uh, basically, um, some hiker just came, you know, was like, hey, what's going on here? And has intervened uh, between the killer and Denise. That's good for, for temporary. Uh, we're going to go ahead and activate Holden. Okay. Try to run Holden down here. I'm avoiding the area terrain because that runs the chance of jump scares. Uh, I have to roll on the d20. If it's a 15 or higher, it is not. So he does not find a trap. We're going to go ahead and roll with Alice. She's going to do her full 10. She's going to roll for her 15. She is fine. Seth has to stand up. So that's a quick action. He's standing up. And now he can only move, do one quick action or move. I'm gonna go ahead and try to move, just move the three and try to catch up. Seth is, uh oh. And this is what I meant by a jump scare. He is within two inches of that area effect. So we roll on the jump, a D10 on the jump scare chart. Two. Eerie sounds. The character makes an awareness test. On a failed test, the character's trips. Luckily, his awareness is 13. And in fact, he can do a well, actually, for plus two. So he's fine. He's fine. Well, actually, that's just uh, an owl in the tree. Uh, so he's fine. It doesn't trip and fall. That is all of their movements. That ends turn three. You get an idea. See the turns go pretty quick and it'd be going quicker if I wasn't you know explaining everything as I go. So that uh, finishes the uh, turn two, it takes us into turn three, we go into the fright phase again. We still do not have anybody over their fright score. We go directly to the building tension roll. Uh, on turn three, uh, it's on a five or higher they activate and I got a six so they do activate. Now the furthest one away, I think I forgot to activate that one. Uh, and I think that is the furthest one away. So we will roll for the one in the middle first. Uh, five, move token towards closest character. That's... It's going to be Max. So that comes towards Max. The next furthest one away is probably the one behind Seth there. Ten. 
uh, immediately conjures the killer. The killer's already conjured. He's going to be enraged again, which is probably not good for whoever that is, uh, that hiker. Next one. Okay, that was the one by Seth, so that goes away. And the next one is probably the one there by Alice. That moves six inches towards closest. That's going to be towards Alice. Fear is chasing Alice. And the last one is the one over here by Denise. Three. Do you, did you hear that? Or remove the token and flip all lights. There's no lights within the six, but that one's just gone. Now it's the killer's phase. So the killer is going to attack the, uh, the poor hiker that just intervened. Three, that is a hit. So the hiker takes two points being strangled by the killer. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. That was a three. When you're enraged, it takes you from criticals being on one to one to three. I thought it was one or two, but it's... So that poor guy takes uh, four points. They only, they only take the three. So that supporting character is killed. That was pretty quick. This guy's supposed to do extra damage. I forgot about that. When a killer kills a character, they leave the table. He is temporarily taken off the table and can reappear somewhere else. What he's doing is he leaves to sate himself in the blood of the character he just killed. So it, it buys you a little bit of time, not as much as fending him off would have or driving him off would have, but it's better than nothing. Uh, and now it is our turn to go. I'm going to do Denise first, and she's going to... Yeah, she's going to take a breath. Take a breath will get rid of two of her, two of her injury tokens. So she's going to do that. She's still trapped there, unfortunately. I'm going to activate Alice. Alice has a Fright Moke... Oh, she's got two fright, fright tokens on her. That is not good. Alice is going to take two frights right off the bat uh, because of that fright token. And she's going to whiz along for her 10. That might not have been a good idea. Because first I'm going to roll for tripping on a, because of the tokens. So she rolls one or two. She's going to trip. She does not. Good thing I said it in that order because now I'm going to roll for the bear trap. And I did just roll a 15 um, the first time. So... Uh, if I'd rolled those the other way, she would have actually done both those things. But that was a one, so she is fine. And she's getting close to where she needs to be. Uh, Max is in the same poor negative situation where he's going to take two, activating where he does. But he's going to get going too. He can only go eight. Um, let me take him through here. That's going to give him a jump scare from that tree, too. Here he sounds. The character must make an awareness check. So he has to make an awareness skill check. His awareness is 10. He does not make it. The sound spooks him, and he trips. Whoops. Uh, now, let's see. 15. Okay, he's not in a bear trap. And lastly, luckily he's away from all those. I'm going to do something different with him. I don't, I don't think I want him in trouble with all these people. Oh. Yeah. He can only move six, but I'm going to move him back over here. Away from... I should actually heal him. He's got good points issues. He's going to go that way. He does not have any fright, though. Uh, so if he rolls 15 or more, he falls again. He does not. So that's where we're at as we go into turn four. So the first thing is we roll for Fright Tokens. We do this every beginning of turn. It's turn four. It is now four or higher. Two. So nothing shows up new. Fortunately for poor Max, that means a new Fright Token appears right where he's at in the middle of the table there. And we go to Killer Phase. At the beginning of the Killer Phase, uh, at the target of the killer phase, place the killer following the rules for its MO. If it is a second turn after it's been driven off, 
or if no characters can draw a line of sight to the killer. We actually did the satiated thing. Um, I don't see that being listed there, so I don't think he can just come back. So I think we're okay for a second. I may be doing that wrong, but that's what we're gonna do. So we'll go straight to the character's movement. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move Alice because things are going well with Alice and Alice is almost there. Alice will be able to help her on the next turn. Um, Alice uh, has to roll uh, under Fright for Falling. It does not fall for that. And then have 15 or higher. She, okay, she's fine. Alice is incredible. Alice is just incredible. Um, poor Max, on the other hand, takes yet another Fright Point. And he stands up. And I might as well take another quick action um, to move his four. Um, he needs to do something about fright too, and that fright point's still there. And we're gonna go ahead and move uh, Seth, his six. He has to roll, he's got, um, he has actual so he just has to avoid a 15, Woo which he does. So he doesn't find any traps. So he's moved fine. Um, so that takes us to turn five. We are flipping through this and we are not so far saving Danielle. Uh, so turn five, uh, on a three or higher, they will activate, that's a six. So the fright tokens do activate. You activate first the one that is farthest away. That's going to be the one way over there. Uh, it gets a three. That one, that's, uh, did you hear that? That one just goes away. And lights would go off if they were on, but they're not. Uh, the next furthest way, and the last one, oh, there's two left. The one uh, just here is next. Five, that's going to move six inches towards the nearest character, which is going to be poor Max. And the last one's the one in the middle of the table there also just disappears. If the killer doesn't show up for some other reason this turn, he will show up the next time those activate because there will only be the one on the table. So the killer could show up and probably will show up next turn. Um, but he doesn't show up this turn. Alice is gonna do, she's, uh, so she's gonna try to do an awareness roll to free Denise. She is successful. Denise is now freed. Unfortunately, that's a long action, so I'm assuming. Let's see if it actually said, because that was a special roll. No, it says investigation roll. And an investigation roll, uh, investigation is listed as a long action. That's what I thought. So that's, that's her action. I'm going to go ahead and start moving Danielle out of here. She's at half movement. Well, actually, as long as she stays within then she's only two inches, well, one inch a turn. So, so that'd be a total of six. So she moves there. Holden's gonna take yet another fright. No, uh, that takes him exactly to his fright. Um, but he's gonna move four inches over to Denise. That's just a quick action. So he can, he doesn't have to worry about tripping or any of that. Uh, he can go ahead and do a long action. He's gonna go ahead and take a breath, which will take a terror token off of him. And do I wanna get Seth further involved or do I wanna, I'm gonna, I think, yeah, I think we're just going to move Seth back where he was. He does not fall. Seth is just wandering around, lost in the woods. All right, that's the end of that turn. That takes us to turn six. We've got to start racing to get off the board. We're halfway through the game. We have freed her, but we're still 
nowhere near the edge of the table. The building tension phase. On turn six, from now on, there is no roll. Uh, so from now on, they automatically, the, the, the fright tokens will automatically appear, um, appear on the table. They also, I mentioned earlier, that there's only one on the table. So what that's going to mean is that's going to cause the uh, killer to appear. Um, he appears six inches out of sight of the character with the most fright, which is parent, uh, present, is Holden. So he's going to start here, um, right where that token was. Uh, because there's, uh, at the end of this fright phase, because there's no tokens on the board, one would appear in the middle of B and C. Um, and, uh, and we go to killer phase. So killer phase is going to start mattering in this turn. Killer phase. Yikes. So he gets to move a D10 plus three inches for each of Holden or of Max's um, tears. Uh, four, that's seven. He needed those pluses. Yeah, that takes him there. I don't think he can base it on all three of them. But he's going to come. Uh, that's the one with the weapon. He's going to have to use, he's going to have to use his gun first. Um, so he's going to shoot. Uh, he could have actually done that before he moved. He misses. Then I'm going to have him go, go ahead and strangle him. Do both attacks. So now he needs a 15. Eight. That is a hit. So that's two points of damage to Max. It is their turn. Holden is going to pivot and smack him with his bat. Hold, oh, this is what Max lives for, not Holden. Max has a combat of 10. Swings that bat. Does five. Uh, this is a long move. He hits him for three injuries. It does not push him back because he didn't have any injuries already. But from now on, he will. So right now he has three injuries on him. And uh, they're still in combat. All right, uh, I'm going to activate Alice. Alice is going to do her free encourage action. That's her special ability. That'll give a plus three to uh, Max for his next attack. And that was free. So she's going to move her 10. Start getting out of here. Uh, she's going to get a jump scare. Seven. Strange Shadow, the character gains a terror point. Oh, that wasn't great. So she gets a terror point from something creeping in the woods. She has to roll 15 or more, and she's found a bear trap. She did. So she trips. And she takes two points of damage from a bear trap. That also puts um, Denise at the next turn. Um, Denise, she could call. No, she's going to try to get out of here. Uh, she's now moving it. Um, she can move at six because she's within two inches of them. She's got to roll 15 or other. If she finds a bear trap, she does not. That takes us to the end of that turn. Turn seven. So again, first thing we do, uh, we don't have to roll for building tension because that's automatic now. Uh, we do have two tokens on the field. This one's the furthest away. We will roll for it first. Uh, it is a six. That's going to be six inches towards the closest. Or actually, <laughs> well, actually, uh, that's going to take us towards Seth there. Forgot he was over there. And the other one, eight, that one's going to go towards Denise. And it gets to her. Uh, that's that's going to hurt a little bit. 
But before we get to that, we get to the killer. Killer is going to shoot at max. He needs a, a, a 12. He misses the shoot. He's going to strangle him. Ooh. Now that could have that would have broken a weapon if it was one of us. That was a D20. That was a complete failure. Uh, Max does not get hurt. Uh, he survives that fight phase, and we go to the character action. And the first thing I'm going to do is activate Max. Max has a plus three because he's been encouraged. Max's combat that brings it to 13. Who just barely. That's what he does. Is he hits for 13. He does three injury because that was. The second attack, it does push him back for two inches because of the bat. So it does give him a little bit of space, but that also is a long action, so that's all he does. Uh, we're going to put a, another uh, a fright token on Denise, and she's going to move. She can still, she's still within two inches right now, so she can still move her six inches. I'm going to move her straight that way. She wants to not get a 15. She did not. She wants to not get a 1. She did not. So she didn't trip and didn't find a bear trap. Alice is going to get up. Alice takes a, uh, a fright. She is at her fright status now, so she's going to have to do something soon. Um, but she's going to go ahead first and just try to get out of here and stay helping Denise get out. So she has to not find a bear trap. She found a bear trap. So she is tripped. And she has taken two more points. Alice is not doing real well here. Seth is going to move his three inches. He's going to shine his light right there. That takes us to turn eight. We're zipping through these turns and we're running out of time. Uh, we roll first for the uh, fright tokens. This one's furthest away. It gets a four, so it's going to go six inches towards Seth. And the one over there is a three. Did you hear that? It goes away. That's a little bit of a relief. A little bit of a relief. Killer phase. Killer is going to move ten plus three. Nine, so no problem. Closing again with Max. He needs a 15 with a gun. I'm sorry, 12 with a gun. That was a hit. He rolled an 11. Well, three injuries. That does three injuries to Max. Max is half dead. And now he's going to try to strangle him. So for 15, that's a hit. That's three more hits. Max is worse than half dead. Max has got to do some something. He's got to do it now. So Max is going to swing that bat. He's going to try to do a snapshot with the bat first. That's a, a snapshot is a quick action. It'll, it'll be a negative five. Uh, so that means he has to roll five or under. He did. Ho! Oh, um, his bat does three points of damage. Um, hits him with the bat. Uh, knocks him two inches. I didn't really want to do that. We might as well try to get out of here. Oh, that was a quick action. I can do take a breath for a short action and get rid of at least some of my damage. Uh, so he's catching his breath. I hope that wasn't a bad move. Our wounded Denise is going to continue towards the light. Uh, and Alice gets up and walks towards the light. And uh, Seth is going to stay there. Light should have come off on that turn. We're going to make it. They only have to get off within 18 inches of the table edge. That is the end of turn eight. Takes us into turn nine. There's only one. A marker on the board. The killer is on the board as well, though, and in line of sight. So that doesn't change. But we do roll for it. And it is a one. So it goes away. Um, which means a new one's going to show up at the end of the turn because there's none here. Right there. 
Uh, killer, killer activates. Uh, five, he's, don't even have to add up the plots. He's gonna run right up uh, into Max. He's gonna try to shoot Max. He could have done that before he moved. That was successful. That's three points. Is that enough? Nope, but close. He's one point away. Now he's gonna try to strangle Max. And he failed. Oh, that's what Max needed. All right, Max has got to hit first. Max is going to try what he tried to do. No, because he just always knocks him away. No, he's going to try to do that. So four, that is a hit. He does the snapshot, just barely hits. Does um, the three points and knocks him away, but it doesn't matter because he has taken ten. So when a killer is killed or takes you know, his full points, he's not actually killed. He's just driven off. But driving off the killer gives you a free turn. The advantage of doing that, as I just did, as a um, quick snapshot, it was risky, but it would, have given me, it would have given me a second hit. And having not missed, it gives me a move. So we're going to go ahead and use that move and start trying to chase after the girls, get to the girls. Uh, the lights come back on because it's killer phase. Um, then, then you know, we don't want to deal with a kick. I can't. Oh, I could take the shortcut here, but it takes me near that tree, which could cause a jump scare, and a jump scare could be the killer. Uh, and I do not want a killer at this point of the game. Uh, so they both move double, so I have to roll a 15 first for Denise. Uh, I did not, so she does not find a bear skin, a bear trap. I know if I roll a one, she'll trip. She did not. Uh, this one's a little trickier. I have to roll 15 or higher for bear. No bear. But I have a lot of fright. One, two, three, no, no, four. So four or under would be fright. Nope. So Alice doesn't trip. And she's in the light. Things are going pretty well right now. Uh, she can take off one of her frights for ending her turn in the light. And that is the end of turn nine. So we go into turn 10. The uh, fright marker automatically activates. It gets an eight. Uh, that's what with that, move six inches towards the closest. That's not great. It's gonna bring it right over here to max. Uh, it would now be the killer phase, but on the first phase, this is what I meant by winning a free turn. By having killed him last turn, he cannot appear this turn. Uh, he could be placed automatically next turn. Uh, so the girls have got to run. But it is the killer phase, so the light switches back off. So killer phase comes and goes, nothing happens. We go to our phase. I might as well deal with uh, Max first. Max is gonna take a fright because of being so close to that point. But he's going to do a long, uh, let's see, what's a short action I can do? Well, I can do a four, a move. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and move his four inches. And then he's going to do a long action to get rid of uh, some of his wounds. He's going to take a breath, which will allow him to lose two injury. Danielle first for her six inches. Don't roll 15. No bear trap. I uh, don't roll one. I didn't. She does not trip. Alice is going to move for five. So she doesn't have to check those things. Uh, but then I'm going to do take a breath, which will get rid of two of her energy, or two of her uh, injuries. Uh, I will go ahead and bring... Uh, Seth closer, and that takes us to turn 11. Two turns left. Characters are almost off the table, uh, but things are gonna happen on this turn. There's only one token on the board, so that means the killer comes back, but uh, he would have anyways, it seems like a waste. But the killer's gonna appear. He's gonna appear within six inches of the character with the most fright. That is Max the abs. So he's going to appear six inches away. 
out of line of sight of Max. He's going to roll a d10 and add four. So that's nine. They still get some, but it's because it's less than eight inches. He gets there. He's going to do his shoot, which he needs a 12. Uh, that's a hit. And that's it. That's it. Um, Max is killed. The killer disappears. That's probably going to save the game for us, though. So Max dies, uh, killed by the killer. The killer goes for the to be satiated. Um, and it's now player activation. And at this turn, we win the game because Danielle can make it off the board. Actually, everybody can make it off the board. Um, so we get off the board, and uh, the game is a victory for our side uh, on turn 11. So there you've seen a sample of a game of Don't Look Back. I don't doubt that I've made some mistakes. It's hard to keep everything in mind, even though the rules are pretty simple. It's easy to make mistakes. It's easy to get confused by things. It's not a complicated game. A lot of it is very instinctual. So uh, that's not a challenge. So you saw an example of the game. You see how it, how it flows. Um, that could have been much worse. Having a killer show up very quickly is often very, very dangerous. Uh, but this particular one worked out all right for us. We came out all right. We were uh, lucky in the end. In fact, I never even used my luck rolls. And uh, we managed to come out successfully. I'm sure, like I said, that I've made some mistakes. If you're familiar with the game and you've seen some mistakes I make, go ahead and mention those uh, in the... Um, in the uh, comments down below. It could be just a mistake I made from, for involved in making a video and playing a game at the same time. It may actually be something I'm playing wrong, so it would be good for my own purpose to know if I'm making game mistakes uh, on a regular basis. Uh, also, um, if you've enjoyed the game, go ahead and include that in the comments. If you have ideas for further content you would like to see here on Cry Havoc Wargame, go ahead and place those down in the comments uh, below as well so we can do what we can to, to meet your interests and produce content that may interest you. If you've enjoyed this video or got anything out of it, please hit like. And if you would like to continue to receive notifications of this or similar videos to this one that help you decide how to spend your money and your time in your gaming career and hobby, then go ahead and hit subscribe. Until next time, cheers.